Hi, everybody. Hi. All right, so it's been Are, a while. Yeah. It's been, what, like a month since the last yes, one? Yes, because you had to travel. You yeah, to sorry about that. So we, uh, we took a while to come back. <clears throat> we went first to Europe for Seminar Cultures Week, and then we ended up in L.A. for the study, the Mark Bell Power Project podcast, more study, all of that. So yeah, honestly, we have three or four podcasts just on, on that trip, out of all that trip. So, but we're going to start with the study, I guess. As you can see, the table we left outside for a month and it's basically gone. That's Brazil for you, right? Yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, it's pretty much. <laughs> no, but that's more like, to Brazil, like leave it out We leave, we come back, half the house is gone. <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. Sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, humidity, baby. Uh, yeah. Let's start first. Where do you want to start? Where do you want to. Well, let's talk about the study because I think that's, yeah. that's what most people want to know. We'll go over the, the podcast with Mark Bell and uh, Nima. We'll... Uh, Do you want to touch briefly on the trip to Belgium? Or? Yeah, no, I want to make a podcast out of that because okay, cool. uh, talking to... Because uh, I, 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 I make a podcast about CrossFit in Europe because I find it very interesting. This follows the... What I talked about is like CrossFit following Jiu-Jitsu in its past and it's you see that in Europe more and more. So I want to I make a... Uh, okay. That'll be the third episode about that. Okay. So now today we're going to do the uh, study. So... Okay. We arrive in uh, LA, so and on Sunday I, I talked to Dr. Nasser. So the point was overall we want to do a study with 20 kids with autism, 20 PTSD patients. Yeah, so to give you an idea, who is Dr. Nasser? Well, is they know by now. I mean, All right, so Dr. Nasser. Touch, touch on it, like. Yes, it, you were there too, actually. <laughs> so it's nice to know you listen to when I say something. Um, so Dr. Nasser is the psychiatrist at UCLA, uh, who I am uh, co-authoring the study with, and Mike as okay. well. So it's going to be the three of us. So uh, Mike <clears throat> Ramirez, owner of Divergent Fitness, and now improve my partner at Improve. And me are, go, are teaming up with Dr. Nasser to, so the three of us will be the inventors of that new therapy, yeah. of that new behavior cognitive therapy. And I'll explain as we go, because that's moving along as well. And our big news for October. Anyway, the major study that we have grants for already will be in October. So by major study, I mean, um, we're going to do first a proof of concept study, an acute, only three training sessions. And then the point of October normally is to do a much larger one. If we're going to talk about that, but uh, logistically speaking, would be like three weeks um, of training in a row with people who have never trained the strong fit way before. And so that we can show on the even epigenetics that some of the genes will be changed and changed forever. Right. So it's not. Um, l let me touch briefly on this because this is a very big part of the study, but you have to understand. We're talking about epigenetics. So that means that about 93% of DNA is called junk DNA. It's not junk DNA. It's just a part we don't understand. Welcome to humans doing science. <coughs> that means that 7% of your DNA is set. It is the way it is. It won't move. But we see that on the brain where a lot of the DNA is not basically not coded. I'm not going to go into all this because I'm going to oversimplify and it won't, if I, like usual, if I oversimplify too much, it won't be correct. So let's just put it this way. Epigenetics is where most things are, which means you haven't coded certain things yet. And we see through training that once you have, it's almost like a skill. When you gather a skill, you have it for life, like uh, like riding a bicycle, bicycle, right? That, right? So we, we know that <coughs> myelization and everything. People are aware of that. That happens on an epigenetic level as well, where once you've gained certain things, now the body has adapted to its environment and now it's set in. Some genes stays, others don't. So what we want to do is a three-week uh, accumulation of the stimulus of training the strong fit way, like changing the nervous system and show that there is a permanent result because of that on an epigenetic level. Does that make sense? That's, that's, that's just one of the of the testing, but that would be a major one to show that even three weeks of that creates a lifetime of adaptation. Yeah. I guess that would be the best way to do it. Yeah, we're going that, into epig epigenetics, so it's excessively yeah. complicated, but, but you get the yeah, idea. That's the idea of October, right? Well, that's the idea of the behavior yeah, uh, therapy, therapy that we would prove in October. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, but first there are steps to get there, okay. right? So we have the grants for October and I guess I can I can uh, announce it now. Like in October, there will be a big conference at UCLA 
with Dr. Nasser and yours truly, and probably Mike, although I'm guessing Mike is not going to want to talk because he hates public speaking. So <laughs> he he's going to be uh, Dr. Nasser and yours truly, and then we will be the co-speakers at the UCLA uh, conference, and I will quote Dr. Nasser, where is, this is to put us on the map. So we'll have a biggest conference where we explain the new therapy. And this should coincide with the opening of the gym that we're building at UCLA and with the big study. So October is when uh, things become official, I guess, yeah. in the medical world. So, you know, so, so how do we get there? <clears throat> right. Yeah. So there's two steps. So we get there by August doing the proof of concept study. So that was supposed to be this trip, but there's certain things that had to be set up. And turns out movement is a lot more complex to put in place than they thought. Yeah. So this is important because this will explain to you why there hasn't been movement and psychiatry put together truly, even with anxiety or any of that stuff. And why most likely outside of those, it won't happen. I'll, I'll explain, but it's, it was a very edifying trip for that. So August, we will get five kids with autism. Uh, 10 uh, PTSD and that will be our proof of concept study. We can use those results in order to get to the conference in October to introduce the therapy. So it turns out to get to August, there was this trip. So this trip was um, set up to actually organize the August one in the sense of, so we had like the movement itself. So it turns out it was more complex. So we had, to, we have uh, machine learning applied to movement and so the way we set it up was, a, was a, there was a camera for movement. So let's start with that. So that means we need to establish the movements, you know, the extremes of the movement, like say rope pull, right? Is the elbow completely out or stays in, stuff like that. So what are, what are the, the extremes of the movement and where do we want to stay? We want to see the movement stay, right? So we took 10 coaches, <coughs> 10 coaches. Sorry, I'm sick from the trip, of course. We took 10 coaches, and uh, including Janina and me, and then we all did the movement so that the machine can learn what the movement looks like. So that's a camera. We did that for rope pull, sled press, sled drag, sled sprint, uh, sun back squat, sun back front squat, sun back press, uh, circular Carry. squat with reverse breathing, carries. Right, so basic, the movement fundamentals of strong fit like that by the way that's a podcast too i want to start to create the fundamentals of strong fit anyway that, that's i'll explain um so that we have an entire system and what i think strong fit should be within the mma world of functional fitness right we were we're gonna be uh grappling but from an explosive anyway I'll, I'll go back on that because uh, <laughs> I'm going to start. You know, yeah. Because yeah, you know I already worked it out in my head, yeah. so I want to talk about it, but there'll be another podcast. Anyway, That's, uh... so um, so we had the, that camera that was filming all the movements to see where we are. We did the same thing on the autistic kid, Jonas, and on the PTSD patient, right, to yeah. see where the variations are. Very important for machine learning because we have to teach the machine to understand what is it we're looking for on all movements. All right. Then there was a camera on the face, and that's very important. That camera also for machine learning will learn to read stress. So the cameras now are so good that even talking like this, they can read discoloration of the skin, even us sitting like this with no effort whatsoever. So that means that you can read sympathetic reactions out of people just sitting like this, just out of skin uh, discoloration. Well, which is a big marker for uh, sympathetic reaction. You know that from the burn the questions. Isn't it, isn't it yeah, nuts? that doesn't count pupil dilation because it can read that. It doesn't look at facial features like polyvagal theory where it can read the muscle of the face. Um, so this basically the camera can read like seven eight markers on parasympathetic versus yeah. sympathetic. Yeah, as scary as that. Yeah, by I way, know. But I was saying, gonna, but, I was yeah, gonna yeah. say I don't actually want to think about that too much again. Yeah. That's so, scary on top of it, we're going to have like an aura ring. So, Dr. Nasser created at UCLA a ring that we will use, like an aura ring, but specifically for what we do. So, by the way, once we have that ring for coaches, you'll be able to put it and start with the app we're creating, starting to read the stuff we're interested in. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah, I know, right? And so, so that's the camera, right? And so you, uh, on top of the ring, you can imagine the number of markers that we are accumulating between the two, because now you get HRV, now you get heart rate, um, like you get so much stuff out of the ring as well. So that was the camera. And then, uh, so we did before and after the, 
the training like last time. So we put sensors on the fingers, fingers on the ground, and there was like a 10 minute listening, you know, uh, getting all the, the markers on the heart. I mean, the whole thing with the sensors. Then after that, we would do the training, and then when they come back, we would do it again. Yeah, we had like a to helmet see. on. No, no, I'm gonna get to that. So first, I'm talking about the camera and reading the parasympathetic, basically, sympathetic markers, and all the cardiovascular changes that matter uh, that matter to us so much. The reason we go in cardiovascular and epigenetics is because we're trying to go at the lowest hierarchies there are. So if you look at the base of the pyramid, you have epigenetics. And then after that, you guys remember when I talked about the eight hierarchies of the system? I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. What's the eighth? Right, so the eighth no, was but like, I know brain what networks. You, yeah, yeah, executive I, network is the eighth. The first one was the heart. Yeah, but there's also certain hierarchies that you can, you not consciously can Good. Can right, you access. Remember, so you, yeah, exactly. You do remember someone. Yes. Like, there you go. Let's fucking go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lifting weights. Let's um, fucking go. So the first hierarchy of the system is the heart. The second hierarchy, for example, is you know, like the pressure of the blood leaving the heart and everything. So we're going to measure the first two, epigenetically speaking, and the first two hierarchies, so the cardiovascular system, because um, those are the first hierarchies, they're the oldest one, the simplest one. So we will see the changes there first, because they are more likely the one, because they are the base of the pyramid, they carry the furthest. Yeah. So if you start with the brain executive network, for example, you will miss so many things because there's so many hierarchies prior to that. Yeah. I hope that makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what the ring and the camera is it. And on top of it, we are, we're adding the helmet. So now it's a helmet. I, go, I don't know if you guys saw the picture. That looks like uh, the most nerdy stuff you've ever seen. But he's making actually a headband. So that we'll just be able to put. And that's for the EEG. So we I don't were, know if that's going to look any better. Oh, he will. <laughs> uh, at least he won't be that heavy. Shit, that stuff. Heavy, yeah. uh, that stuff was drilling into my skin. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's <big> that's uh, <laughs> for EEG. So EEG is the brain wave. So what we did is we did the EEG uh, before and after the the training, but we also did it on the cyclical squat with reverse breathing. So we did it through uh, basically facing the camera so we could see the changes on the face as you exhale on the way down and inhale on the way up while doing that, that cyclical squat. We had the machine reading that, but also the EEG, the brain wave, and we would see how the brain wave changed. Yeah. So imagine what we can do with that. Yeah. And by the way, we also did it on the burn the questions. Yeah, and we did... Uh yeah, we did that with the burning question plus the lactate testing and everything. Right, right. So, and then, oh, yes, and then we're adding obviously that lactate testing. And out of that, I saw something on the autism side <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> that I found uh, fascinating. So, we're doing all that stuff, right? So, we're doing with the coaches, 10 coaches, we go through the movement, then we go measuring before and after. We do the EEG. Oh, by the way, we even did the burner questions where we measure prior lactate. Uh, the whole thing, like the finger, the sensors, and the brain wave. Then we did the burn the question, and as soon as we came back from burn the question, we had only one minute to die, then get there, put the sensors, and put the, the helmet. So we could read the EEG after yeah. the burn the question. So what we did is we had the video, you know, that very violent video, before burn the question and right after, and see how you would react to stress after burn the questions. So yeah. What's funny about that, which I thought was hilarious, is that of everybody who took, you know, who, uh, who had the, the video prior to burn the question, including their PTSD people, which is normal, I was the one who had basically any reaction to the video. He was like, oh, you're the most normal of all of them. More normal out of all of them. I'm like, I knew it. I'm just saying, I've been saying it like, so the answer, am I crazy? The answer is no. I have proof. I'm the most no you're the most normal. I'm the, I don't know, most, but more normal Compl out of all in of the, them. Yeah, in the group. In the pool. I mean, they usually they do it on PTSD people. Yeah, so. because... But out of all the coaches, I was the one who reacted the least to the video. Yeah. So I'm either the more normal <laughs> or I'm dead inside. It, was gonna, one. I was gonna, it depends really how you look No, at. it's just, you know what I think it is, is I just don't care about you people. Because it's, you know, car crashing and there was a husband like screaming at his wife and I was like, yeah, so he didn't hit her. What's wrong with you? <laughs> she starts crying. I'm like, pussy. Uh, then you see people getting shot. I was like, I'm just happy it's not me. 
<laughs> so uh, <clears throat> I'm looking away, going like, I know. No, you know what? You know what this is, though. Is I know violence yeah. from fighting, from all the stuff. So from the burn the question is like, I got to burn the question that were so violent physically. When I see that stuff, I'm like, I don't see the issue. So no, we didn't do anything. I'll be curious well, to know what happened. Well, when I said after. violent videos, I was expecting a lot more violent than what they showed. It's for kids too, so no. And for suicidal people, no, you're not going to put people. No, but getting, I was just like. They're not going to show the ISIS cutting the head <laughs> off. No, we're not going there. Thank, thank God, because I don't think the parents would agree. Anyway, I don't think so either. I didn't say it should have been, but you I was. Reacted more than me. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we're going to get the results of all those studies. Yeah. That should be fun. <clears throat> but, but uh, anyway, I thought it was funny. But ended up like so we, we you guys like tested all the movements and like, made the machine learn the movements because yeah, you ended up the getting there phase, yeah. and you had like originally all those patients lined up like the right. autism so patients we're going to talk the, about this because okay. i want to explain why so how to make studies okay. so now i get it yeah. but first i want to finish explaining okay, sorry, what is it sorry, we do sorry. so that was the eeg for the brain wave for all that stuff what was was is very interesting to me is we did it on the cumulus one and we did it on the reverse on the cyclical squat with reverb breathing that's why i want to see the greatest changes in the parasympathetic versus sympathetic so we set that up for like uh, nine days straight yeah so that was, turns out it takes a fuck ton of work just to set it up so i'm sure and oh yeah full days too, yeah, yeah. and way. we did Those the lactate full yeah yeah full, and we did the lactate uh real fast before we go to why it's so hard to do a study like that let's talk lactate so we had jonas who was an autistic kid who's doing the thing before his training session he starts at three so I'm like, that's an elevated state for lactate, three minimal. Uh, I was like, well, that's interesting. I bet, I bet you most autistic kids are there. It doesn't really mean that much, but a little bit of anxiety coming to the gym, I could see it. He does a workout, and, and at the end of the workout, he's like, all right, I'm done. <clears throat> and you're like, all right, he's done. That's it, yeah. right? But um, hard for him, but you know, there's no sweating. It's not beyond the question. It's none of that. We take the lactate, he's at 17. It's crazy. That's a burn the question average uh, lactate yeah. marker. It was That's higher than, than a lot of people on the on the burn the question that they measured. Yeah, but the burn the question, me, I did it at the end of nine days. I was, it's funny. No, no, no I but was, I mean just no, no, to I know, say like no, 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 because uh, I I can drive to twenty on a burn the question yeah. easily if I do the heavy stuff. I ended up having a low level at like thirteen because I was so exhausted mentally from the eight, nine days of study because I was on the last day that from the first set I died. Yeah. I had to stop. I was just dying. So I didn't push physically that much. But in the meantime, Jonas did. So but imagine how fascinating that is. When he tell us, I'm done, he didn't show any signs physically of being that he went through a burn the question. Wasn't sweating. There was no like, you know, discoloration that I could see. The camera can see it, but I can't. Um, there was none of your typical sign. It wasn't mouth breathing, barely. He didn't show, he was a little bit excited, but there was no marker that I could see, and I'm good at this, that he was at a 17 on the lactate. So crazy. So I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. All right, so let maybe it's just Jonas, but let's imagine for a second it isn't. Because I know me when he say I'm done, if he wasn't from the autism side and you, want to, you don't want to press them, I would have said, no, you're done. No, you're not. Yeah. Now we're going to do the drugs. Now we're going to do the sprint. I would never let someone in that state, if he wasn't autistic, stop there. Because I'm like, that's not a burn the question. Yeah. So, it may, but that raises so many questions. First of all, from a coaching perspective, have we pushed some of the kids so hard we make them shut down? Because we don't know they're actually at the limit of their physiology. Yeah. 17 for that kid on the lactate is the limit of his physiology. He's pushing so hard already. So, is it because ASD create a physiological problem right that you're spending way more energy so is it that is it an energy production problem or is it uh, as i asserted that the lactate goes up because you feel threatened on the sense of identity the, the two podcasts on the subject what if, and the autism, remember, the prediction, hypo prior, the prediction is low, right? The sense of identity is always, a, by definition, weaker, right? So is it possible that it would be threatened in that stage very easily and therefore the lactate goes up? Is the sense of identity a main issue with autism then? Is it a little bit of both, right? But no matter what, from a coaching perspective, imagine that some of the kids are already at 17 and since we don't see it, we keep pushing you would shut them down so what is asd 
Does it create a energy production issue? Is it a sense of, is it a threat of the sense of self that is out of whack? Um, are they producing too much energy this, this way constantly throughout the day? Um, I'm telling you, the lactate thing is going to open so many doors. I keep saying it. The lactate, someone somewhere will get a Nobel Prize on the lactate eventually. Like it's, I think it's uh, glycolysis. We all know it's the main energy pathway, but I think the whole lactate stuff is so much more important. People use it as a proxy for acidity, which is wrong because you can have hyperlactatemia without acidity. Uh, anaerobic threshold doesn't exist. Like. We just got it wrong. And so anyway, uh, in the case of autism, I have a feeling lactate will be very important. And by the way, if he gets to 17, then we need to teach him to be able to handle that and uh, lower it when he gets to... How do you come back from 17? Yeah. There's only one way you have to train. So maybe that's why also training works so well on autism. Imagine if the energy production system is either out of whack or mismanaged or whatever. Is that what the problem is with ASD? That certainly could... Remember, at 20 millimoles, the lactate goes through the brain. And then um, the brain networks don't work correctly anymore. So, Jim, ooh, like there's a lot to look at that. So, uh, during the August and October, I'm going to do a shit ton of lactate testing on the kids. Because I have a feeling, like, unfortunately, we have to prick the finger, but I get a feeling that for autism, this is going to matter tremendously. I mean, not that I haven't been saying it for a while, but yeah. Anyway. So this is what August so and October will be, yeah, right. So that, that was a lactate. So now to go back to the machine learning uh, and the movement stuff. So yeah, it was full days, like 8, 8.30 in the morning till like 4 o'clock at night, uh, just doing the movement, repeating it so that the camera can learn and everything. I can totally see why there will not be other studies between movement and psychiatry, because the amount of... Uh, data that is required just to do rope pulls, forget the squat, just to do rope pulls is... So yeah, you're going to have to have a low waist. Yeah, and the thing is, is that the, the let's, let's say you say they part, like the, they have no idea from No them. clue. So if you were not there oh my God. to... It would like, have never worked. Okay, so this is why there won't be studies done. It's because you need a person that understands both sides, the movement side as well as the psychiatry side. Because otherwise, you don't know what to look for. So we analyze the movement, yes, but which movement? The reason we did those movements, because they're lowest, because of autism on one side, obviously because of coordination and everything, but also from the PTSD side, because you don't want to introduce yeah, and skill and abstract thinking, because then it will lead to a greater anxiety. Plus, like the people who come in, they are usually don't have much of an athletic background. and So you have one or the other. Yeah. So imagine if you ask a strength coach to design a program. He's going to put overhead squat like they did in their stuff. He's going to put barbell back squat and everything. You can't do that on the autism side. And on the PTSD, you're just going to stress them out because they don't know how to move. You're going to make them fail. So unless you understand anxiety and the PTSD aspect as a psychiatrist, but you also understand the movement side as a strength coach, that was a big bug, uh, you, you, this cannot be done. Yeah, and plus, like, because by the way, those two sides cannot talk. No, and, and oh, it was crazy yeah, it to was see. Yeah, it was crazy, and and the thing, you, you actually risk them getting hurt if you're gonna make them do a barbell back squat because there's so much skill involved and like yeah, injury and like yeah. they cannot like even, so they, even if they could right like, right. But then you're gonna have athletes that can do a back squat, but then you have to choose the PTSD out of that, and you can't choose the autism. So without and the low what waist, weight and what weight and which so weight you're going to have to choose the exercises correctly. Yeah. It's going to have to be low waist. So everything I've done with strong fit for years and years and years and years, right? This is the only way you can make that study. And on top of it, you have to understand the psychiatry side. Yeah. So this is why there's no correlation between the fitness and the academic yeah. because they get there and they're like, we're going to do it like this. And I'm like, uh, no, we're not. <laughs> because oh. this, 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 and they go, yeah. That makes sense. By the way, just so you know, we get there on the last day and they go like, yeah, we want to film the, the Q-1. It's like you have one camera, right? There's six of us. Yeah, Q-1 is 10 minutes. <laughs> you understand that where the problem starts, it's an hour where the coach have to wait. And so everything was like that. I was like, no, we have to set up like... like so the, yeah. on that alone, the logistics of the yeah. study alone were a nightmare. And therefore, it was <clears> so good, like... Um Dr. Nasser, he has seen firsthand what the training does and he knows 
and trusts you guys and has a very open mind. Yes. But let's be honest, with a yes. lot of other professors, this would never, doctors, professors, no, no, this would never be able to work, <coughs> they, right? Like, well, they come in and they go like, no, I need this. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, but you can't have that. Exactly. That's not how this works. So, and they would be like, yeah, but I want that movement. Because they're looking, you know, like a squat, like basically it's, Honestly, the academics are like CrossFit judges at a competition. Yeah. I want to see the hip going below the knee. I want to see the head through, and that's all they care about and everything. But that's not what we are doing, because they need they need markers. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a ladybug. Yeah, except she's uh, the ladybug green. is green, orange, and black. I've never seen a green-headed nice. ladybug. Welcome to Brazil. Anyway, um, so imagine trying to do a academic study between a psychiatrist and a crossfit judge yeah that's yeah. that's what it that's looks what like so I, I get there and i'm like oh my god and then you have autistic oh, by the way, so, to do right so there's jonas so. so he grabs jonas and he makes him sit down puts sensors on on both sides and nexus that have to stay on the table and he makes him do that for 10 minutes Thank God, Jonas is so good. We got so lucky. It. We got so lucky. That, by the way, Jonas is one of our best athletes. Yeah, That's exactly. the one who ended up with a 17 on the lactate. But I'm like, oh. And then they put the helmet on his head and make him watch the video. And now his mom is right yeah, next to say, him. Like, and she's watching the video he's watching. And I'm like, we didn't tell her about the video. The reason I didn't tell her is because I didn't, I didn't know we were going to do that with the autistic yeah. kids. Because I was not informed of any of it. So, thank God I had spoken to her for an hour or prior, yeah. explained to her what the study is and about, and she was very excited about her son being able to be tested. But moving forward, we're going to have to have calls with Mike, with every single parent, to explain the testing procedure, what we're looking for, why they should do it, how it's going to help their kid. There's such a logistical background yeah. to this that was not done for this one, and but that's how you do it, yeah, just to see what that also showcases the trust the parents have in Mike and how much results yeah. they have seen because yeah. they have a faith and a trust in him and in the gym yeah. that is just thank uh, goodness yeah so incredible. by the way with, so without Mike there's no study because <laughs> no parent on earth would go through that shit I was looking at it going like she's gonna blow a casket sooner or later yeah. she didn't thanks, thanks, thank, because thank, she's yeah, I mean, because she's a great mom who just want to see her son do better but first it requires trust yeah. that's where Mike comes in if Mike has not spent the number of years, untold number of years doing this and created um, community the well. community that he created, the trust that he created, the consistency, the, the, consistency, the, the atmosphere of the gym, the, the soul of the gym. If he had not built such a strong soul for his gym, that study would never happen, ever. And we're not even talking about the shit show of the movement themselves, because the camera had to set up certain way to do rope pulls. So we couldn't go too far. So we had to do push and back, push and back, push and back like that, which actually is a lot harder than, than he looked. Yeah. I was out of breath often. Um, it was, uh, anyway, so that's what we did on the movement alone. And we had to have the camera filming the face and everything. So it was, from a logistic perspective, it was crazy. Yeah. But then after that, you need to get the parents. Anyway, we need a project manager to, yeah. to go Yeah, and then it's, it's one thing to have it on paper and then the reality of the situation yeah. and the reality of the movement. And it's... It no way this, this study happens unless the stars align. Yeah. You would have to have Mike's gym, the strong fit stuff, Dr. Nasser, like this yeah. is why you won't see, that's why you don't see, we all know exercise works better than, than um, pills and Zoloft and everything, but we don't, uh, it's training in general, right? We don't know which training would work best. Because if you see all the studies, it's based on people doing, going to the gym versus people taking the pills, yeah. right? But they don't tell you what they do in the gym. Right, and there's there's uh, two, three. I think there's only two studies that I've ever found on anxiety and actually training, and it's always the same. It's on the bicycle. Because now I know why. It's because they don't have the skill to do it with movements. Yeah. There was one study I found, and it was leg press and some machine, because they can only do it on a bicycle and airline or with machines. Yeah. Because they need control of the movement and because they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Like no one in academy, they're all pencil necks, they're all med students and everything, none of them train correctly or know what training is. So even I, as I explained the stuff, you could tell, no one cared. So I was like, oh, that's why I'm here, fine. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, but so by day two, I was like, all right, I'm taking this shit over because otherwise none of this happens. Yeah. And so I was like, ah. So <clears throat> I think Dr. Nasser realized this when I opened the gym in October-ish at UCLA, I better be there to set it up. <laughs> but at the end, I think that's what 
at the end of the day, that's what take, it takes to move things forward. It's like Elon Musk buying Twitter. It's an individual that yeah. makes a difference. It's it's I an see. individual like Mike. It's yeah. an individual like you, and it's yeah. an individual like Dr. Dr. Nasser. Nasser. And the three of you working together, that's what's going to create that result. Turns out the because world needs heroes, are. not corporations. Yeah. So really the solution is not in the group. I'm sorry to tell you all, look what corporations are doing. That's another podcast. But look at corporations are doing versus uh, people. At the end, the world needs heroes. So yeah. the whole communist, uh, feminist idea of the group, because that's what it is at the end, uh, is bullshit. It doesn't yeah, work. And it, 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 it is like stars aligned. Like uh, as Dr. Nasser's daughter yeah. trained in Mike's gym for years, he saw the results firsthand. And, yeah, but so it takes you know, people. Uh, it takes people, yeah. It takes people pushing through, fighting through. It's the hero struggle. That story that is as old as the world. At the end, that's what changes, you know, yeah. you need Luke Skywalker to uh, defeat the evil empire. At the end, it comes down to people. Yeah, it does. And so, yeah, no, it does. And so, anyway, that's a podcast I want to do at some point. Then I get to talk about Disney, because I told you all Disney was going to kill Star Wars, and I was right. Anyway, not that anybody cared now, which is why I cared Two and a half years ago when I made yeah, the podcast. That, you are always too early. <laughs> Isn't it, wasn't it obvious? By the way, where's my whoops? Sorry, I was wrong from uh, that Obi-Wan podcast I did when I was saying they're going to kill Star Wars. They're killing Star Wars. Yeah. You see where we are now? You're fucking Harvey Weinstein, personal assistant. Do we forget about that? You know that she had the balls to say that how basically she was a victim of the whole thing, that he made her hate men because of uh, what she witnessed? What you witnessed as his personal assistant, like you are not part of the whole, the problem, yeah. <laughs> you're a victim of the thing, not part of the problem. Wow. Okay. And yeah. Anyway. So yeah, anyway. but to to go back to the trip, like, um, how, yeah, how do you feel about it all? How is it? How it was the, it was excessively productive. It was great. I'm exhausted. Then on the way back, the plane. So now I'm sick. I'm gonna try to train today, but I'm. Uh, Physically, I'm okay. Mentally, I'm completely drained. Yeah. Out of that, because it was like first of all a trip in Europe. The, the two were, were two combined is a bit, rough. a bit yeah. rough. Yeah. But the the ten days in LA, it was nonstop, and we had dinner every night and stuff. It was it was great, but it was emotionally speaking, I'm still not recovered. Like I'm still, yeah. I'm gonna have to. Thank God, the Elden Ring DLC well, I, <laughs> arrives on the 21st, so like yeah. two days from now, because maybe that will allow me to get my brain back. Uh, but. <clears throat> I, I've, I don't remember last time I was that emotionally drained because I was like, all right, I, I need to... This to me felt a bit like how I felt after like the Barbell Shrug podcast. Oh, because we did also, in the middle of this all, we also went, we did right. a six hour trip. So we you took Wednesday off of the study, Wednesday off of the study because on Tuesday night, uh, afternoon, we drove six hours to Sacramento mm -hmm. in this Badass truck that was um, freaking awesome. Mike as a Dodge Ram. Because America, so, yeah, exactly. freaking America. I'm pumped about America for those things. He has you a know? big ass pickup truck. She was so happy. Oh, it was so cool. Yeah. Like next, I'm buying cowboy boots. I'm into it now. Cowboy and, boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And a truck. Anyway, cowboy so we, boots, we sorry, drove to Sacramento yeah. the next morning. No, we yeah. went to have dinner with uh, Graham. We and, went and from uh, the Barefoot uh, Sprinter. Yeah, it was so nice, such a lovely we, home. No, but that we'll talk dinner. about him as well on the next yeah. podcast. And then next morning we go do the podcast. So that yeah. nine, we leave at four <laughs> because we spend the whole day talking, <laughs> talking to, to them. them and, and then I, I was showing Nima the sandbag and everything. I think he liked it. Yeah. I mean, Mark as well. But anyway, um, then we drove back home, get to LA at 10, 11 o'clock. Yeah. Go to sleep next morning at eight. Do it again. Yeah, exactly. So in, 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 in the, the study. mean of all of that, yeah. I mean the podcast. It's it's very very draining for you as well. And speaking. No, it wasn't. Uh, honestly, them. I had a lot of fun. No, with I mean them. not draining, but like uh, taxing on your system. And I yeah. couldn't feel it at that moment because I was so focused on the study yeah. and everything that I I was like I'll pay for it when I get home. <laughs> I was right. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm sick now. But I I just went like this for like uh, three weeks, <clears throat> and so emotionally draining because how big that thing is becoming also because i was like shit i need to take over because this will fail i'm like i'm not gonna let that fail yeah, yeah. but but now that we're gonna do the conference in october and all of that i'm like oh shit it's it's getting real oh by the way dr nasser confirmed to me that i'm getting a degree from ucla <laughs> what's this going on which i find hilarious anyway. it is so funny by the way i in get a degree way, from ucla so and i'm the co speaker at the conference i'm gonna flex so hard as you on, should. There's going to be a lot of middle finger on my Instagram. I'm not 
I'm not going to necessarily tag certain people on it, but you'll know who I mean to say this to. Anyway, so that's where we are with the UCLA stuff. It it's is, moving it, forward. It, it's, it's, it, the proof it's of study cool. will be uh, August. We'll have five kids, autism, uh, 10 PTSD. So usually teenagers with uh, suicidal tendencies. That will be our proof of concept. And then October is the big one. So we're almost there. We're almost there. And once we have the therapy, this will take about two years for the FDA approval and stuff like that. We're talking like codes for the gyms. We're talking like paid by insurance because now it's a therapy. So that means that the improved gyms will be actually improved therapy centers um, approved by the FDA, paid for by insurance on top of the regional center. So we will create a new therapy and honestly like we talked about it with Dr. Nasser but the idea will be to keep the research going from there so my guess is I'll split my time between uh, improve and research at UCLA. Oh that's what you really like passionate about the research. I always, I always was a psychiatrist I just didn't go to med school yeah. because of autism and med school honestly but I wanted to be a psychiatrist when I was 18. There's a reason I finished Freud so early it's because yeah. that's what fascinates me. Humans the human mind is what fascinates me. And so I get to go into the research aspect of it. And but importantly, I get to also create gyms, therapy centers for people to... Yeah. Which is still where your first love is with you know, movement. And, well, you, know. But, you know, it's my first love because I think from the beginning, I felt if I don't do that, I'll die. Yeah. I won't make it. Yeah, and uh, I think I was right. I think that's why I killed my brother. Yeah. At the end, training, not that it's that surprising, that humans are made to move. That's it. But I think, and then we'll talk about it on the, on the podcast I want to do about the strong fit system. Um, I think humans are made to move hard. Like, you know that bullshit, like breathe only through your nose when you train, otherwise your heart rate goes too high and everything? Bullshit. Bullshit. Yes, you want most of your work to be inhale, exhale. Yes, that's true because you, you don't want to freak out and everything. So you don't want to be in mouth breathing just from walking on a treadmill. But that being said, <clears throat> if you think you can go through life without mouth breathing, you're fucking kidding yourself. That's an insane idea. You think that when the bear is coming at you and you have to fight, well, you're going to go in apnea. You're not yeah. going to breathe because you have to brace. You have to, when you wrestle, there's moments where you can't breathe because you have to lock everything. To, yeah. it, that's not how this works. Yeah, it, it, is, it is very... Lifting heavy weights. Yes. You're yes. going to inhale, exhale through a... And, and that's also kind of what, I mean... Um, my takeaway of the trip is very different than yours, but one of the things I, l I learned being three weeks in the West after being in Brazil for so long is that uh, in the West we lost co uh, contact with reality. You know, the oh, that yeah. idea that life is soft and that it's yeah, all going to be easy. okay. And, yeah, and it's, it's, it's all going to be okay like it's, when it's you live in Brazil. Yeah, it's also crazy because like it just it makes you feel so disconnected with for example where i come from it's when you walk down the street it's all perfect there's no bugs stinging you there's no animals yeah. around there's no forest around and there's probably other places in the u.s no where threats there's no threat and la is probably very you know clean sanitized. in that sense yeah. sanitized um mm -hmm. but i'm sure there's other places in the u.s that where it's a lot more real and raw in that sense but and i bet you people are different yeah though. i think so too mm -hmm. i think big cities and like clean and hygiene i'm like it's just weakness at the end because it 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 breeds weakness. It breeds self indulgence whole, it, and self indulgence that, brings that uh, hygiene. Like, I'm not saying weakness. don't be hygienic, but like no 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 but no 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 no. Like, but you're right because remember the peanut butter. Yeah, it's, thing. it's when they stop giving peanuts to kids and moms. Now the peanut allergy raises like crazy. Yeah. But we know that from sanitizing everything, that anti germ stuff and everything. It makes people weaker from an immune system perspective. We know that. Yeah, and I think also like to one another, like to go s like to soften your clients and never make them yeah. push. It's not a kindness. You're, no, it's, it's a actually weakness. the opposite. You're doing them wrong. I think people confuse. They used to confuse kindness with weakness, and now I think people confuse weakness with kindness. I think that's yeah, actually yeah. That's exactly. Of course, you phrase it better than me, and I spent fucking three three minutes talking about it. But that's exactly what I mean. So annoying. God, <laughs> you're so smart. Uh, yeah. Whatever, it's funny. Like smart the first two months, but after four years, yeah, four it's years, you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. Do you want to touch a little bit on the on the podcast? No, no I want to do it next time. Next time, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
because uh, I want to make the, those ones short because I'm still exhausted. Yeah. But I want to I want to be able to talk about it fully on each stuff. Okay, cool. It, the podcast was very interesting it, too with the power project. It was cool. So we got because so nice. we did. A, but such we talked. Nice people. By the way, we talked so much about we did so much of the sprinting stuff. We talked about it. We. Uh, I'm telling you all, like the sprinting stuff, you're all crazy to, you know what? Okay, so let me leave you with this. The three things that I said were some of the most important stuff of Strong Fit are three things no one heard. Q minus one, reverse breathing, uh, cyclical squat with reverse breathing, sprint drills. Those are the things that are from a nervous system, anxiety, physical perspective of three of the biggest epiphanies that I had. All those three things are mind-blowing in their application. And that's the shit you don't do and completely forgot I ever mentioned. Yeah. Is that I mean, funny? I, we, we don't, I don't get anybody to sprint. Like, no Everybody one knows burn the questions, but if I say sprinting, no. If I say reverse cyclical squat with reverse breathing, some of you do it, but when do you apply it? Did you really like we do it, it's like two minus one. Most people, you all quit within two months. Yeah. Isn't that funny? Yeah. And I swear, those are the some of the most important thing I've ever said. Definitely top five, three of the top five most important thing I created. Internal talk, external talk idea, yeah. But two minus one, cyclical squat with reverb breathing and the sprint drills, I didn't create it. I told you about it from Janina's one. She taught me. You would think that if I tell you in the first person, this was well, amazing, <laughs> he would have more traction. We get no traction on the sprint drills. No, no by the I, way, very few people like, do. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe it's just because most people think it's that because I'm your wife, he just promotes the sprinting. No, uh, which I, I would believe, no, like, honestly. No, I think he makes for a boring movie, that's all. Uh, maybe too, yeah. But I, I will make, I, I do have the, 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 you know, the idea to make a little bit more videos on it yeah. for the community. I think Remember, you we have done so many videos on it and <coughs> no one watches it. Like even yeah. the clients you have one on one, I said, let's go sprinting. They'll say literally no. To yeah. <laughs> no, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody I tried with, they quit within two weeks. But I think, so. I think there's no, I think you'd, because I they think don't coaching see the need for it. It's not obvious. No, That's because coaching now is people. done through internet and YouTube. That means coaching is entertainment. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. And sprint talking. drills are not entertaining. Yeah, and they, they really hurt. Help. They hurt your feet. You saw all the time. You don't see progress right away. It's hard, and it's like, if I put it on Instagram, I'm gonna look like shit. It's not nearly as sexy as snatching a barbell, so I'm not doing it. Oh, and it's the same as Q minus one. Uh, by the way, that's a podcast. Q but yes, same thing as cycling. This this is a podcast I want to do once we finish talking about the trip. Is uh, programming is entertainment now? Yeah. What you want out of programming is to be entertained. Yeah, Are yeah, you yeah, not yeah. entertained? <laughs> Movie? Joker. Oh, Jesus God. Gladiator. Almost. Oh my God. It's. I was, Are you not entertained? It anyway. could have been a Joker, let's be honest. Yeah, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Anyway, uh, too much of training now is that. Is you guys want to be entertained. You yeah, want that well, new I mean, movement. You want that. No, not you guys, you guys, you know what I mean? Like as, as a group that I see on YouTube and on, not talking about the strong fit community, I'm talking what I see on YouTube when it comes to training, when it comes to like the, the CrossFit uh, programming that I see uh, being pushed out there, especially on YouTube and Instagram and everything. This is just entertainment. This is to look how sexy this looks. This workout is amazing. Like, is it? We'll talk about it on the podcast, but we'll tell you some of the amazing workout we have for conditioning and you'll see. They don't look amazing at all. They are, and they'll make you extremely fit. But who cares? Because who wants to do that shit? Yeah. Anyway, that'll be a podcast we will make after the one about the podcast, the Mark Bell po yeah. uh, Power Project podcast. Sounds good? Alrighty. Bye, everybody. Bye.